My name is Jelani Hussein. I'm the Executive Director from the Council on American Islamic Relations here in Minnesota. J A Y L A N I H U S S E I N, Executive Director of the Council on American Islamic Relations in Minnesota chapter. We're here today to announce uh, charges that we'll be filing on behalf of 21 Muslim employees from southern parts of Minnesota, Alatana, and Faribault. We've been working at Truth Hardware. Uh, we'll be filing charges with the, e uh, with the EEOC uh, for these employees. Uh, this charge also includes both Truth Hardware and uh, staffing agency, uh, Doherty. Uh, this morning's press conference uh, will be opportunity to share with you some of the facts of this case uh, and also just to remind you that CARE Minnesota works very hard uh, with our clients but also those that we sometimes are dealing with. Uh, in this case we try every possible way to address this issue uh, and unfortunately in this case we're forced to take the necessary steps to file these charges uh, which are uh, discriminatory and prayer issues or something that we face deal with greatly in, at Care of Minnesota. Uh, we will have the Civil Rights Director uh, brief and talk about the case. Uh, we also have here with us today uh, the uh, employees who have been affected. Uh, unfortunately, not all of them could come here today, but we have uh, a few of them here and they will share with you uh, their stories as well. Uh, Care of Minnesota works very hard to enhance the understanding uh, of Islam, but also protect the civil liberties and civil rights of American Muslims and, and, and all as well. With that, I would like to now hand it, hand it off to the Civil Rights Director, Amrita Singh, who will brief us a little bit on the case. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm the Civil Rights Director for Care Minnesota. My name is Amrita Singh. That's spelled A-M-A-R-I-T-A. -A. Last name is S-I-N-G-H. Um, so as Jaylani said, we're here to discuss uh, the failure to provide a religious accommodation by two companies uh, to 21 Muslim employees. So on June 19, we received a complaint about Truth Hardware and Doherty Staffing Solutions uh, and their failure to provide a religious accommodation to Muslim employees who wanted to pray. Um, today we have 21 complainants. So far, EEOC discrimination charges have been filed on behalf of 15 complainants. Uh, some of those were filed last week on April 20th, and the remainder of those were filed yesterday on April 27th. Um, we are still waiting on a few people to bring back the notarized complaint form in order to file it. Um, the main issue here was that Truth Hardware has uh, scheduled break times in their departments, and those scheduled break times did not match the prayer times. Truth Hardware did not allow employees to take breaks outside of those scheduled times, and so the employees were not able to pray. Um, the performance of the five daily prayers is a mandatory and essential part of life for Muslims. Completing prayer in a timely manner is the most important Islamic practice out after the declaration of faith, which is also uh, the belief in God. Each of these prayers must be done in a specific way and during a specific period of time. Under the Constitution, Americans are entitled to the freedom to practice their religion. As such, they are entitled to reasonable accommodations. A company must provide reasonable accommodations unless it causes an undue burden. We do not believe that providing prayer breaks would have caused them an undue burden, as employees are permitted to take bathroom breaks without permission. This contradicts the idea that prayer breaks would have had a significant and detrimental impact on productivity in a way that bathroom breaks did not. Uh, the employees requested that they either be allowed to take breaks outside of the scheduled time or that the break time be changed. Most employees only needed one additional or a different time um, for their break during each shift. These employees never asked to pray as a group they offered to take turns. Um, they also offered to punch out so that they wouldn't be paid for these breaks that they wanted to take. And again, the law permits reasonable accommodations and that's all that these employees were asking for. Initially, when, we, when I received the complaint, uh, we went to Truth Hardware and we asked that they be, we asked if they were willing to work with us to figure out a way to meet both sides' needs. 
they were not interested in doing this. Um, instead, many of my clients were told that they could not continue working if they needed to take breaks outside of the scheduled break time. They were told to go home until they could be given an accommodation. Many employees never received a call back and were not able to return to work and were forced to look elsewhere for work. Uh, some of the employees were transferred to other departments where the break time did match the prayer time. While this does qualify as an accommodation, it was a temporary fix. The prayer time changes with the seasons, so these accommodations were eventually no longer helpful as the year continued. Um, when the prayer time no longer matched the scheduled break time, many of these employees were told that they were no longer needed and that their assignments had ended. In addition to the people who were told they would get a call back and the people who were moved to other departments, we also have people who were told that they were being terminated for violating the bathroom policy. This is in reference to a rule that you could not leave water on the floors or counters. We believe um, many of the employees who were told that they were terminated for this reason said that they had not recently used the bathroom at the time that they were told they were being terminated and we believe that this was pretext and retaliation for asking for an accommodation. To prohibit anyone from praying is discriminatory and a violation of Title VII of the Civil Rights Act and the Minnesota Human Rights Act. To terminate these employees, end their assignments, fire them under various pretexts, or take any other adverse employment action is retaliation and it is illegal. Most of the employees no longer work at Truth Hardware and no longer work with Doherty Staffing Solutions. A few of my clients would like the opportunity to work with them again, if possible, in the future, and um, we hope that that's something we can work out. For the remainder of my clients, we would like to ask for these companies to um, change their policy so that they do provide religious accommodations. Um, we're also asking for back pay for the wages that were lost when due to discriminatory treatment. And we are asking that these companies receive training on how to provide a religious accommodation and work effectively with Muslims. Minnesota's population has changed drastically over the last few years. And with that, Muslim individuals now make up a considerable portion of the state's workforce. And they have legal rights to the same workplace standards and accommodations as non-Muslim employees. Under, the title, under Title VII of the Civil Rights Act and the Minnesota Human Rights Act. Uh, given this change in the population, it is well past time that companies prepare and implement policies that protect and ensure the civil rights of their employees. Uh, thank you. And now we will have uh, a few remarks from three employees. I'll first start with uh, Nasteha. I was not allowed to pray anymore. The company does not understand. 
and uh, we as Muslims have to pray, and it's very important to our faith, and it's very important to our lives as well. We cannot skip our prayers. We must pray on time every day. They should not disrespect us and treat us like we do not matter. We work very hard and collect our job and care about this country, and also about taking care of our families. We wanted to work, but we also needed to pray at the time. Thank you. And now we will have Mr. Abdurrahman Mahmoud, and we will speak in Somali and Hujra. Thank you. My name is Abdurrahman Mahmoud, uh, first name A-B-D-I-R-A-H-M-A-N, and last name M-A-H-A-M-O-U-D. Um, I wish I mentioned it through hard work. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. He said that if you're working on tooth hardware, when you initially applied, he would ask them if they would be allowed to pray. He was told yes. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. And uh, there was a time when his lead supervisor came to him and told him that uh, uh, you can no longer pray and how in the H-E-L-L are you praying? Uh, he said, he offered a solution, said I can punch out and pray if that would work or any other way where I can continue to do that. Uh, the manager then told him that this company does not allow for anybody to pray. And he said that if you pray, you will be fired. Uh, and so after that, when he went out to pray, uh, someone from the management came to him and said, since you did pray today, you will be fired. But if you will stop praying, then you can stay. And he said, no, I want to keep uh, praying, and I would like if the prayer break, uh, if the breaks could be aligned or something could be given so that we can continue to pray. And I'm definitely a witness to what happened, and I would like that to be uh, addressed in this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll just uh, conclude with uh, just a quick one more remark. Um, again, this uh, a care of Minnesota, we see uh, about uh, nearly 200 cases in 2015. Uh, the majority of those cases involve prayer accommodations. Uh, we have worked with a number of Minnesota companies who have worked with us to, to help uh, address this, uh, this issue. Uh, there are times when there's a great deal of ignorance that takes place to address some of these issues, but the law is very clear. Companies have to allow uh, for religious accommodations reasonably, and our clients have made every effort to, to work with the company. We have made every effort to work with the company. Unfortunately, uh, today we are asking the uh, organization, the EEOC, to step in, uh, and we will look at further and possible uh, opportunities to advocate for our clients including and but not limited to lawsuits. And with that, I would like to open up for any questions, and I will allow our other listening to answer some of um, I, I was listening to, at some point it was okay to pray, and then we got to it wasn't okay to pray. Can you walk me through how that came to be in this circumstance? What happened? By the time the clients came to us, that policy change had taken place, so I have never received an explanation as to why that change happened in their policy. Um, all I know is that there, they, I think there was a manager, some people say that there was a manager who took a leave of absence and when she came back, they changed the policy. And I don't know what that had to do with productivity or their number of employees or anything like that. Um, they just weren't allowed to pray anymore. So I'm sorry, I don't actually have a clear answer for that. Well, that's, that is the answer. <laughs> yes. 